Um, in terms of group creativity, we've talked about diversity. So diversity of skills is conducive to groups being more, more creative, essentially. That's the main factor. Uh, in terms of group processes, you know, it's a little bit of a repetition of what we've talked about, so I'm not going to go over that. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of organizational factors which I don't have time to, I don't want to go into because they're too complicated for this class, so I'll just keep all that. So based on all of this, all of these five dimensions of creativity, what we know about creativity, what does that tell us about how you can lead people so that they are more creative? So imagine that one day you're a manager of a team that needs to be creative. What can you do to help them be more creative? Uh, essentially, what research says, based on what we've seen before, is you want to be, you want to mother your creative people. So you want to be a loving mother to them, uh, which means you want to foster a open and tolerant culture. You want to have a feminine and motherly approach to people. Uh, and essentially, you want to encourage and coddle them to be their best. You look at companies like Google, that's kind of like how it's like. Uh, and has anybody ever been to the Googleplex by any chance? Or seen pictures of it? Uh, so Google is a great example of uh, the type of environment where you mother it, right? You have uh, amazing food available everywhere, beautiful offices, no clear timelines about when you come to work and when you leave. Uh, you're uh, given immense freedom in how you organize your work, who you can collaborate with. Uh, you're given challenging pro but exciting projects to work on. When Google started, that policy is not fully in place anymore, but when Google started, every employee was required to spend 20% of their time on a pet project of their own choosing. So imagine you work five days in a week, one out of the five days that you work, you would work on a project that you were excited about. And you could in, in, enroll anybody in the company to help you work on that. Now the caveat was that that project, if it worked, belonged to Google. But you know, that's how Gmail was created. Somebody said, let's create an alternative to those you know, uh, terrible email programs that exist or unsatisfying ones and create a one that will reflect Google's way. You know, and Gmail was born that way with a group of programmers that uh, you know, spend their time. But you go to Google, you see a lot of failed projects. A lot of them have failed, you know, but Google Maps, I think, uh, came out of that. Uh, so, you know, let, have, let people work on quirky projects because they find it fun and, th and that's going to foster creativity. So Google is a great example of that. Um, you, there's a company called IDEO. How many of you have heard of IDEO? It's a, it's a design firm in Silicon Valley. It's also a great example of that, that kind of culture. Right? You have uh, open spaces where essentially they're hired by other companies to, read, to design new products. Uh, so, and they work in teams to do that. Uh, there's a great video that I sometimes show in my classes, but not this time. Uh, but if you want it, I can give it to you. A, a great video about IDEO and how they work, how they brainstorm. Um, so, that's sort of like the main story now. Now, uh, you look at the leaders of these two companies, for example, the founder and leaders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, uh, the leader of IDEO, Dave Kelly, who's now retired, but uh, when he founded the company, they're really like mothering leaders. They're really uh, not the type of arrogant person who uh, sort of imposes their view and, uh, on others and uh, squash other people's opinions. So, so th that's sort of the established wisdom. Now, what was interesting for me, like I looked at the literature, and I was like, that's great. I love that story. I, I'm all in favor of, of the loving mother style. That's my favorite style. I, I feel that I would do better in that circumstance. But I cannot help notice that there are counterexamples, right? So, you know, like a, you know, a, a, a famous one is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, if you know anything about him, if you've read his book or seen it, you know, the, the movie, or whatever, read articles about him, not exactly the loving mother, Steve Jobs, right? More like the angry, stern father type, right? Uh, and then you have like other 
kind of examples, like chefs in particular, lots of chefs. Uh, Ferran Adria, I did a, a lot of research on him, was dubbed the, the most creative uh, chef in the world, one of the most creative people in the world. Uh, his restaurant, so he's the, he's the guy who started molecular cuisine, if you're into like cooking, molecular cuisine foams and uh, those, those kind of stuff. Yeah, he's uh, from uh, Spain, northern Spain, Catalonia. He had a restaurant called El Bulli, which was named best restaurant in the world for 10 years uh, until it closed. Uh, and um, it was pretty much impossible to get a reservation there. Uh, but uh, the guy really, really d changed, you know, he's kind of like the Picasso of uh, modern cuisine. You know? not, not exactly a loving mother either, you know. You see, uh, there's a great documentary uh, uh, on, uh, before they closed, uh, on uh, Fernand Adria at El Bulli that shows like how he created new dishes and how he interacted with his staff. Uh, but you know, there's other chefs, you know, uh, you know, in the US, Marco Pierre White is an example of that. In Japan, Jairo Ono, uh, there's a great documentary we also on that, Jairo Dreams of Sushi. I'm kind of into food, so uh, I'm a f I like those documentaries. Uh, but you know, like you have you know other you know Howard Hughes, the founder of uh, Hughes Aircra Aircrafts, uh, and also you know movie director, and many other things. You know, was kind of like not exactly the loving mother, but very creative, had a very creative empire. Uh, to some extent, you could say that Mark Zuckerberg. I, I'm not sure if it fits in there, but certainly movie directors. I've studied movie directors in my research. Lots of movie directors who are not exactly the loving mother style. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock was known to be a control freak. Oliver Stone, I had a friend who worked with Oliver Stone on some of his movies and he was practically strangling people on set. Like he was on you know, high and uh, drunk and uh, upset when things didn't go his way and he would strangle people. Uh, and my friend was the only one who could some, somewhat calm him down. Uh, but uh, you know, Lars von Trier, you might have read some stories about uh, Lars von Trier and how he treats his actors and how, you know, essentially he's almost crazy. But he's also recognized genius as a uh, movie director. So what do, you, what do you make of all of those counterexamples? Like how do they fit the love in mother style? Uh, oh, orchestra conductors, you know, other examples. You have Riccardo Muti, the, one of the former musical directors of La Scala in Italy, who was uh, fired from La Scala for being too, uh, too, uptight to the Manning. Uh, Herbert von Karajan, uh, who was a very successful conductor, but also known to be very, very demanding, very uptight, but you know, obtaining great results with that style. So what, for me, like what this showed was that uh, the mothering model works at Google, at IDEO, but it's not the only style out there. So uh, what do we make of these leaders? Uh, the way I, I thought of it was, you have, in fact, now there's a new article that's, that is out and makes that even clearer, is you have to think of those two situations as different ways of going about creativity. So in the Google and IDEO model, the leaders are not the ones who are being creative. They are hiring people to be creative for them, and they create an environment in which those people are going to do their best. Right. This is best illustrated with Apple. Uh, well, this is true too, you know, in, in the, let's compare Apple and Google. Uh, in the Apple case, uh, while you have a bunch of creative people working for somebody like Steve Jobs, uh, Steve Jobs saw himself as the main creative person who other people had to adapt to, to implement his vision. So uh, you look at chefs like, um, uh, this is also very, uh, you can see this very much with uh, Fern and Andrea. Uh, those are kind of geniuses that use a retinue of people working for them who allow them to uh, put their genius into uh, motion to actually implement it. So, you know, Fern and Andrea, for example, is a genius in the sense that he has photographic memory. So he read, uh, when he, you know, he, he uh, becoming a chef was an afterthought for him. He was an accounting student who uh, had to do his military service uh, in, in Spain and somehow uh, became the, sh the personal chef of an admiral because he was good. And then after that, continued at another restaurant and then, you know, just 
turned out that he was just an amazing chef. While he was doing it, they started reading books like the, uh, uh, the big uh, uh, Spanish uh, Encyclopedia of Cooking and the, Sp the French one, and would remember every one of those recipes, every one of those pages. So he can tell you, like, you know, with photographic memory, I remember that dish. Now, he, he himself has created thousands and thousands of dishes. Now, you know, El Bulli was the, the, the idea was to make kind of like um, tapas. So you had a series of 50 different small dishes, right? They were all dazzling creations. Uh, but to create that menu, which is changed every year, for every one of those 50 dishes, he would try like 20, 30, 40. So, you know, every year he would go through thousands of possible possibilities. And doing that for 10 years, right, that's kind of like tens of thousands of dishes that he has experimented right, with. And, you know, he has a team that helps them create this. They try different things. They source different ingredients. They you know, try a lot of stuff. And, you know, Ferran Adria essentially remembers almost every one of those dishes. So when he tastes something, he's like, yeah, we tried that in 2005, you know, like when we were... So nobody else, you know, so, so that kind of, that's, that's a genius that is out of the ordinary, right? Uh, Steve Jobs had that, you know, had a certain kind of genius when it came to understanding where the computer industry was going. He had a way of foreseeing what would happen that nobody else understood. Now, you know, this creates people who are the opposite of loving mothers. They are so smart that they are impatient with everybody else who's not like them. Fern Adria is like, how can you not remember this, you know? You stupid bunch of like, you know. Uh, if, if they have such facilities with their crafts. They have such knowledge that they tend to be very demanding, very impatient, very driven. And anybody who's not like them, who's not out to create a kind of work of genius, of art that they want to, with the expectation that are outlandish, they have very little patience for that. Which is why, you know, it's very hard to work for these people only the people who kind of like are willing to put up with such crazy uh, demanding personality are the ones who are going to stay. You know. Steve Jobs has, the, I recommend if you're interested in uh, that, you read Steve Jobs' biography by um, Isaacson, uh, where it really gets very well into all of that. So he has an amazing life story. Steve Jobs has an amazing, has multiple wives. You know. He died young, but he had a very full thing in life. Uh, so, but you, you will see that his own uh, interpretation of his style was the people who cannot put up with me, essentially I act as a filter. My, 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 my abrasiveness acts as a filter to get rid of the people who are not good enough. <laughs> That's kind of his uh, assumption. Now clearly what's interesting is there's two models. So I'm not saying that uh, this model is... Um, the correct one, but it's an alternative to the mothering, mo the mothering model. Uh, both works, they depend on your style, they depend on what you're after. Uh, some people really want to work for Apple and with Steve Jobs, and some people prefer to work for Google's or IDEO and for the mothering style. But uh, uh, in, in, in the uh, sort of like um, lone genius style, you have to be a genius. So. Not everybody can do that. 